And good evening everybody. Welcome to Dave's Tackle Box. It is Sunday the 17th of February 2013 and it's nine o'clock. And before we go any further this week, uh, there's one thing that I, that I really want to do and that is to say get well soon to Lisa Fernley, uh, who is the owner of Cloud9 Vaping and the sponsor of this show and has been for some time. I understand that she's not been well at all and uh, is in hospital at the moment and the store has been offline for a little while. Uh, so on behalf of VTTV and I'm sure on behalf of all of our viewers, I'd just like to say uh, get well soon Lisa, we're missing you and I uh, hope to see you back on your feet sooner rather than later. Um, uh, on tonight's show, he says, realising he's left his running order miles away. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we've got a bit of a mixed bag again. Uh, a bit later in the show, uh, Tim's going to be joining us, and we're going to be chatting about a couple of things, including an update on a story he did uh, a little while ago, a few weeks back now, about cheap juice and some of the effects of it. Um, so he's got a little update on that for us. Um, I've been trying my hand at mixing juice again. Now I did mixed juice a long long time ago and then I stopped because I'm lazy but like something sparked my interest again recently and uh, I started mixing juice uh, I've mixed up a rather large quantity of juice and I'll be showing you something about that uh, we're going to do a very brief update on the EVIC uh, and there'll be a, excuses are plenty when I come to it but I, I shall show you the EVIC I'm getting on very well with the EVIC but uh, I still haven't done the full VT that I was going to do, the full review, and I'll explain why. Um, and there's some other bits and bobs. Uh, we're going to be looking at some vape meets that have taken place recently and are coming up. Uh, it's the usual mixed bag from Dave's Tackle Box. But before all of that, let's roll the titles. Right, so here we are back in the room and ready to go. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to mention tonight, uh, it's a kind of the uh, on the continuing theme of these pillocks at the EU who are trying to bring in all kinds of inappropriate regulation for our nicotine liquid. Um, there's been much, much, much discussion on all of the forums and the, the one that I'm most familiar with obviously is the UKVapors.org. Now on there, and I'm sure on other forums if I'd had the time to go and check, uh, Catherine Devlin uh, of ECITA, the Electronic Cigarette Industry Trade Association, has been input into a number of the discussions on there for the last several weeks. And one thing that's, that's starting to crop up is a lot is the amount of sort of misinformation or disinformation that is flying around about e-cigs. And it's very hard sometimes when you put on the spot with a stupid comment, whether it be from an MP, an MEP, a health secretary, um, we all saw Dave Dawn's uh, coverage the other night and showed the letter that he'd had from uh, one of the health ministers. Um, you know, the, 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 there was a lot of uh, misunderstanding about why we use these things, you know. Um, so Catherine Devlin, anyway, has put together a little two-page handout. Um, the link to it uh, I will 
try and get to you but i will certainly put in the show page for this show afterwards um you can find it uh in the short term by going to ukvapors.org and in the uh we have a, a forum there now called legal threats and campaigns and it's stickied at the top um under the heading of an important update from eCitter and in amongst that thread uh there's a link to this document that i'm about to show you and i think it's brilliant let's get it on screen now uh i've just done a little mock-up image there uh so you can get the general sort of feeling of what it looks like but it can be printed out back to back so if you, you can print this out on your own printer give it to anybody that you think might be interested we can include them in letters to mps uh it's in a pdf format neatly already if you just want to pinch it from the eater site that's absolutely fine to do um and it's just a really good summary um so without uh, i've got to keep an eye on my time here uh but without reading the whole thing out let me just read you some excerpts from it um first of all it goes it starts off by describing what is an electronic cigarette and what's it for uh and this is the kind of level it goes at an electronic cigarette or e-cig is an electronic device that vaporizes a liquid solution a liquid into an aerosol mist simulating the act of tobacco smoking some look like tobacco cigarettes, but there is a wide variety of choices to appeal to individual smokers. It then goes on to talk about uh, what, what a liquid typically contains. Uh, and there are a number of quotes in the little green boxes, as you can see them there. Um, Since there are no products of combustion to be inhaled, experts estimate e cigs to be about 99.9% safer than continuing to smoke. Uh, it's got the quote from Professor John Britton, CBE, uh, which he sort of famously made on a BBC interview recently. If all the smokers in Britain stopped smoking cigarettes and started smoking e-cigarettes, we would save about 5 million deaths in people who are alive today. You get the general sort of idea. Um, it talks about whether electronic cigarettes are, are safer than continuing to smoke. Uh, it's got quotes from doctors and people who know what they're on about rather than these pseudo experts that the press keeps seeming to drag up from somewhere. Um, it asks the question, do we save 5 million people or allow them to die in the context of the proposed revisions to the Tobacco Products Directive? Um, so this, to my knowledge, is the first sort of, uh, in, it's certainly in two sides of A4, which is what we're talking about. This is the first sort of document that we've had that we can hand out to people. Um, if you are inclined, uh, you could print out a few copies of these and give them to your employer, your MP, your MEP. Um, if the local corner shop, and this was a suggestion by Catherine, if the local shop is selling these things over the counter, See if they want to stick a couple of these things next to the display. Uh, it's good information. It's been laid on for us absolutely on a plate. Uh, it's the easiest thing to do. I'm going to be printing a few off. Um, and uh, hopefully it will, it just gives, it's a tool that we can use to educate the uneducated. That's, that's pretty good summary of what it is so i just wanted to give that a little plug because catherine has been good enough to put all that together there's some good sort of quotes and some good facts and uh, statistics in there uh it looks like a useful resource so let's use it and that's the end of that little feature let's have a sting <laughs> Just sort of comment in chat there that missed where to get it i will put the url because it's quite long so i'm not going to bother putting it on the screen but i'll put it in the text on the show page on vttv i'll stick it on the vttv forum uh if you can't wait until i've got around to doing that you'll find it in the uh legal threats and campaigns forum on ukvapors.org and i'd be surprised if it wasn't on the other uk forums to be honest but i've not had a chance to check um but yeah come back to the show page uh certainly by tomorrow and it'll be there the link to the pdf right so pressing on um meats i'm always banging on about vape meats uh in this show as you probably recall uh last week we had a bit of et from the south wales mini meat um i've got a few sort of 
topics themed around mini meats um, tonight. Uh, I'll just try to figure out what order to do them in. I'll tell you what I'll do first of all. First of all, I'll tell you about a meet I went to last Monday. Okay, now uh, anybody who's been around the vaping game for a while, particularly around the forums, will know Prof Beard. Well, he organised uh, a mini meet, uh, a meet, a vape meet in Stafford last Monday night. Uh, he simply had a word with the landlord and said, do you mind if we have uh, a few people around? And they gave us a little sort of, it was like a, a separate room, um, but just up a little flight of stairs. It's quite an old building. Uh, you, you'll see when uh, you see this bit of VT I took. This is not an extensive VT. I took the camera along just to record it for posterity. Um, but this is the Stafford meet last Monday the 11th of February. There has got a hotel room for 15 quid. <laughs> 15 quid. I wish I'd known about that because I've got to drive back there. But uh, yeah, great fun. Another mate, another box ticked. Thanks for watching. There you go that was the stafford minimum like i said i just uh i was too busy chatting yakking having a good time uh to to be filming too much but that just gives you a little flavor and um, a couple of things i want to mention uh first of all is a company which i wasn't familiar with uh but vape space uh who sent along a little box of goodies uh, one of the guys turned up uh with a box of goodies each one with a bit of canthal and a bit of wick and a little bottle of juice for us to try so uh, uh this will be featuring in a future episode of vapor scene as part of juicy juicy in a couple of weeks time i believe so uh i've not tried that yet it's french vanilla and i'll be giving that a go <laughs> uh the other thing i wanted to mention was congratulations to prof beard uh, on Valentine's Day, he commemorated his fourth year of using e-cigs and stopping uh, smoking cigarettes. Four years. That's a long time. There are many people who've been around longer than four years. Um, so that's good. I saw some comments in chat there just uh, as that, 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 that VT was streaming out uh, about, you know, uh, trying to organise, thinking of organising. Uh, Maddie Paulus, I'm not sure if he's in the chat tonight, uh, he's a VTTV regular viewer, was there. I'm sure he would uh, concur. It, it was great. Um, we, you know, uh, Prof just simply asked if it was okay. Uh, to to get a few people round, agreed a date with the, with the landlord, 
posted it on the forum and I think I think it was about 13 or 14 people turned up and we had a good chat <laughs> you know it doesn't have to be uh, a ridiculous scale with raffles and all the rest of it although those are always nice if you want to do them um, now on the subject of vape meats uh, and although it wasn't really a community event uh, you will have heard Dave Dawn saying the other night uh, that Vapex which as you know some of uh, the VTTV guys are heavily involved with uh, the date has had to be postponed um, just in case anybody didn't catch Dave's show um the 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 potential issues that we've got with the uh eu tobacco products directive revisions and the mhra announcements which is due sort of any time between now and may we believe um uh it would it would be too risky to ask people to make a big financial commitment uh at this stage so um we've done the prudent thing we've basically decided to postpone um, uh, watch what comes out of Europe uh, what decisions are made uh, what the MHRA say and we'll be looking to reschedule this as early in 2014 as we can uh, but for the time being I'm afraid uh, that one is parked um, which we're all obviously very disappointed about however it's not all bad because the community vape meets continue uh, in May of this year, I will be organising another Midlands Mini Meet. It will probably be in Tamworth, subject to confirmation. Uh, we're looking at late May in Tamworth, and uh, I've already spoken to a few vendors who are going to back this. Uh, the Juice Bar will be there from Decadent Vapours, and so on and so on. Um, but before then even, our very own Daz, Vaping Daz, um, uh, a a member of the VTTV team has been busy himself and he's organising a meet on the 16th of March and here's some details. That's the very latest knees up, knees meaning North East East Smokers. Uh, this is in South Shields at the Sundial, the place that took us in when the Rattler threw us out, but we're not going to harp on about that. Uh, the date is the 16th of March, uh, which I believe is a Saturday. It starts at midday, it goes on till they chuck us out, which is basically chucking out time. Uh, great fun at the last one, even with the uh, sort of unscheduled change of venue halfway through. <laughs> um if you can make it do uh and we'll keep you up to date with meats and stuff on dave's tackle box as the weeks go by let's have another sting <laughs> now then the evic so on the show last week i said right i'll be doing an update i'll do a proper vt and a proper review of this this being the ovali branded version of the evic uh but i'd only just received it last week so i said i would do one for this week well guess what i haven't <laughs> um the 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 reason for it is simple okay right um the i'm waiting for the 1.2 software release to be available now I've been checking the website sort of daily um, the thing comes delivered with the version 1 firmware on it and you get um, and there was version 1.0 of what they call the MVR my vaping record software that you run on your computer um, so the firmware is what goes on the eSIG the software is what goes on your computer the software and the firmware work together and that's where you can do all the clever things like you saw on Dave Dawn's show. The 
The version that does the really clever stuff is version 1.2. Now, on Friday night, Saturday morning, was it? No, it was sometime yesterday, I think. The version 1.2 firmware appeared on the Ovali USA website, which is where I have to get the Ovali version and the Ovali uh, branded version of the software. Uh, to use that, you also need the 1.2 version of the MVR, My Vaping Record, software. But they've only put the version on there for the Mac. The PC version isn't there. So it was my intention to put something together today, to download the software, get it all working and all the rest of it, and to put something together today, and it didn't happen. So I will be pinging an email off tomorrow <laughs> to find out where the PC version of the 1.2 software is. And when I've got that, I will do my VT with the screen captures and so on and so on. Um, so for now, you're just going to have to live with um, a simple sort of summary from me, a little update. And that is that I haven't used the, the only other device I've used since this arrived is the ellipse when I've needed something I could just shove in my pocket easily. I've just been taking this everywhere with me. I've been using the Fagatti on it. I don't think I've used anything else on it yet. So uh, it's just brilliant. It just works. I like it. So, uh, um, so next week, assuming I can get the software, there will be, I promise, a proper review and a good close-up look at the EVIC. But for now, I'll just say it's really, really good. End of part one. See you in one and a half minutes. in the room right okay it's part two and so for first part of part two i'd like to say hello and welcome to tim boniface hiya tim hello, hello dave good to be back about things mate. Back. all right yeah. uh now I'm t i've got all this new modern technology and stuff and trickery and mm -hmm. wouldn't it be ace if i knew how to use it there we go Hopefully those little things off the bottom will disappear soon. <laughs> but oh, how are yes. you, mate? It's working now. It's working now. Good oh, job. yes, I, I need to start by apologising for the quality of Tim's connection tonight, but it's not very good, is it? No, it's not. It's not been good tonight well, at all. It's uh, not much we can do about it. Uh, he lives down south. So. Yeah, everything works on batteries down here. <laughs> <sighs> so he hasn't fed the hamster in the wheel no. clearly and um, right so we've got a couple of things to shoot through uh, now uh a couple of weeks ago was it last week or the week be i think it was two weeks ago wasn't it we were talking about some cheap juice that was doing the rounds by you now uh, i assume this is the stuff that caused the, all the blisters in that guy's mouth well, we're we're not sure whether it was actually this one. This is this is one that was doing the rounds in my hometown, and I just put the word out that if somebody had a bottle, 
wouldn't it be nice if they just dropped it off to me at the shop so that I can have a look at it and, uh, you know, find out what it was like. I mean, it's it's £3.50. Right. It's a big bottle of juice. Now, I should have bought the juice home with me, but I've got one now, um, and uh, the, bo the bottle is chip compliant in every single way. Um, it's, okay. a 14, it's a 14 milligram juice. Um, only downside is it tastes like vaping tree bark. <laughs> so it, it really is pretty hideous. It's meant to be a tobacco to, a tobacco juice and it just tastes like tree bark. So okay. um, on the chip compliancy side, great, all there. It's only cheap because it tastes horrible. So <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't see it. I mean, it, it, it didn't make me fall over or lose my breath or anything instantaneously. I mean, it just didn't taste very nice. So. Okay, you know, so, so do we? We're, so we're, we're not sure whether that was the cause of no. that stuff. Then no. okay, no, that's good to keep no. the record straight. I think yeah. uh, we don't give the wrong impression. And no. uh, yeah, that, that 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 sounds good to hear. Except it tasted crap. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But then again, actually, I've got some very expensive juices here that I've I've described as tasting like tree bark, or or, mm. or burning wood, damp wood. Yeah. I think one of them was. Damp wood. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I mean, there's no accounting for taste, I guess. <laughs> none, at, none at all. I mean, I'm sure some people are quite happy at the price to, to vape away on it. Is it so uh, that's three pound fifty for how much? It's a it's a it's a ten mil size bottle. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and the same and the, the same fella, you know, does uh, three for a tenner. So, so thirty mil for ten quid. So it's pretty cheap juice, really. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. It ain't bad. It ain't bad. You know. Okay. So. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, at least we straighten that one out. Um, yeah. Now tonight I was uh, we, we were chatting uh, before the show there and uh, yeah I, I sort of put you on the spot a bit didn't I I was I was asking there basically you know uh, uh, I'm interested to know what people are using at the moment right because we do live in a kind of sort of mm. uh, a sheltered world us reviewers and presenters and stuff uh, yeah. I'm sitting here using an Evic with a Fagatti on it and juice that I've mixed up myself which there'll be more on later incidentally mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and uh, and what have you but obviously uh, you know the, the vast majority of Evic users don't frequent forums they probably don't know, know that half these things exist um, but but I mean uh, that, that to me at the moment that's flavour of the moment for me that little setup there <laughs> Evic Fagatti and mystery juice because I don't mystery want to spoil juice. the third part of the show you said <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but uh, what, what are you using currently? Um, Evic right That's STV STV Nova Tank right and uh, a juice that tastes rather similar to raspberry menthol rather similar which to raspberry one, menthol is, or is it raspberry yeah, it's, menthol? It's one, I've, it's one I've made which is similar um, right. not, not quite the same but uh, it's a uh, very did low did you make it from juice. raspberry and menthol? I did, funnily enough, make it with raspberry and menthol, <laughs> with a small with a small dash of nicotine and a little shake. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, what yeah. I'm really interested in, though, is uh, is what, what what's Joe Public buying? What sort of stuff are they going for now? I mean, we don't have to worry about brands and all the rest of it, but but you know, we've had countless debates on on yeah. on this show um and on other vttv shows and you see them on the forum all the time and there's some strong opinion about it but you, you you're the man you 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 meet the public right okay um Every are, single are day, people yeah. buying e-cigs or are, are you know cigar like things or are they buying egos or are they going for the bigger stuff what what, what what's selling what's moving well the, the the most the most popular combination is um the uh Nova Tank, VV Nova Tank, Stardust, V3, whichever brand you want to call it, on an Ego Tornado style battery. That is the most popular e cig on the street. That's the one everybody likes. It comes in pretty colours. Yeah. Um, and, and it just works. And that, that's the very, that's the most popular. Do you stock the cigar like things? Um, we do have um, disposables that look like right. cigs. And, and, and do, do, also... do, you, do you move many of them? Uh, fair few, fair few. There's a lot of people which which come in sort of every couple of days and they'll buy another one. Okay. Uh, even though they've been told it's pointless, please do buy a recharge. Because presumably when they come in, yeah. you say, have you considered this? Exactly. Yeah. And, and they say, some and they that, say, I want another one of them. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> fair pretty enough, much eh? Exactly that. If, yeah. if there's one thing that, that, that we, we, we will definitely agree on, it's what works for you. 
You know, yeah. it's not what you're being told. If it works for you, it works for you. And I'm I'm, I'm just genuinely curious about these things because we make a lot of sweeping assumptions, and uh, it's good yeah. to know if they're valid. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and, but but you say that they're, they're they're the exception, really, are they? Most people are going for most, ego tornado style. Yeah, most yeah. people most people tornado style. I mean, the tornado compact kit for us yeah, sells every single day of the week because it's all in the box. It's enough to get you going for a week. Um, it's go home, use it. Come back and see us when you run out of juice, and it's it's a very straightforward and easy thing to do. What they're putting um, on them? Sorry. What are they putting on them? Um, Clearos well, or tanks or? It can be it can be it can be any. Uh, the mini the mini Nova tank is quite quite popular for those people right. that wants two point eight mil of juice in theirs. Right. Um, a lot of people are using them standard with the with the with the tank system, the Tornado tank system, um, or the uh, the VV Nova V three combination. I mean. It really, I mean, a lot of people, because because they're commonplace to see them on the streets down here. Yeah. I mean, we, we were talking today, um, Andy and myself, and we were saying that we reckon that uh, next to probably sort of Manchester area, we're the next biggest vaping capital in the country down here because of just the immense amount of, of uh, product that's out there on the street with people. Which is, let's face it, that's encouraging to hear because we've heard yeah. the likes of Carl Phillips and, um, and Jerry Simpson on uh, on dave dawn shows on, on vt talk um you know talking about normalization you know and yeah. getting people used to seeing these things so they're not sort of scared and intimidated when they see them and it sounds like uh you see because up here i just never see i've never seen anybody the closest the only place i've ever seen people using e6 apart from myself with any frequency whatsoever was when i was working in germany Mm. And that was quite common on on the platforms, on the train stations. I saw uh, people working at the airport, sneaking a quick stealth drag and putting it back in his inside pocket and that kind of stuff. But over mm. here, I just don't see anybody when I'm out and about. But you're saying down by you, they're becoming a lot it's, more... It's, it's commonplace. I mean, I've, I've probably mentioned this before. Uh, I, every time I walk past the local comprehensive school or whatever they want to call it on the way up to work in the mornings, there's always... There's always quite a few in action around that area. Um, and also, walking through the town in the daytime, people will stop, look through the shop window, and they've got one in their hand. Uh, the local pubs, always people use them in the local pubs. Um, and there's very, very few people using Sigalikes. I mean, even the staff that work at uh, the, uh, the Tesco around the corner um, buy their e-cigs from us. So. I'm I'm just going to interrupt you there um, yeah. because there's a there's a comment in chat which which I just can't let go by. Sure. It says Dave K. Could you ask Tim if he lives near to Carshalton in Surrey, as he seems to remember the name from his school days. Thanks, because it's been nagging him. So there's one <laughs> that you can sort out straight away. Well, actually, nowhere near Carshalton. I'm da I'm, I'm down near Eastbourne in East Sussex, so. Uh... Uh, we're, we're nowhere near. We, we, Surrey's up the road, but we're just not that close. <laughs> but there you go, there you go, Super Seven. There's your answer to that one. <laughs> I'm just looking. There's a couple of comments in there. You know, um, Ewald. He's saying he's still amazed how many people are using them in Manchester. Mm. Uh, even the last couple of months, you see more and more people. Basically, every pub he visits has at least a few vapors now, and it's just weird. Maybe I'm just in a, a vaping black hole. Um, there aren't too many shops or anything near me, and that, that, that's got to be uh, that. That's got to be a huge way of promoting the use of them. I'm sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go. Yeah. Go. go. Yeah. I was just, just. I was just going to pick up on the point of the, of the shops things. I mean, in 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 in, in our town uh, on our high street, uh, there is ourselves selling E6, and we like to think we're a bit of a specialist shop. You've got uh, the guys down the road at the cost cutter. They have VIP E lights on the stand in their shops um the next cost cutter down sort of half a mile down the road has again e lights vip on the shelves in their shops i mean every single shop around here that's like a cost cutter style uh, or budget style shop has a stand of some sort um you know and i'm sure that's probably commonplace around the country because they're all on the stock profile yeah, yeah, of, that, yeah. of that store Okay, yeah, another interesting comment there from Andy Sutton. He's saying Tesco, uh, near where he is, he's down Bristol Way. Mm -hmm. uh, he's out of stock on every lookalike he uses since the news coverage, I'm guessing the BBC uh, radio and TV stuff that's been around, uh, yeah. which is interesting. Okay, all right. Well, look, let, let's let's draw a line under that one. That's interesting. Now, oh, one last question. 
Yeah. Um, and I've just got like uh, the the presenter's dread. My printer software is trying to do an automatic update. There we go. <laughs> Smooth, seamless. Um, yeah, I've got one question for you. What's the most popular strength of juice that you sell? 18 milligram. 18, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, that that would have been my guess, actually. I'm curious. I'm curious about that. Anyway, that was more for me. That was nothing to do with the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, uh, we need to crack on. Uh, so I just want to um, say, I did. Did you catch Andy Sutton's show last night? Have you had a chance to watch that one yet? I I breezed through it a little bit before I went to bed last night, but I haven't had a chance to sit down and watch it properly. But how cool is it to have Andy back on board? Oh, and it's, it's doing brilliant! A regular show. So that, absolutely. That, that, smoke to vape on Saturday. SOS. Um, mm. We've got other names for what that stands for amongst the team, but you'll have to guess them. Maybe we'll run a competition one day. Um, but because of that, I put together a little trailer just showing the new show times and all the rest of it. Uh, I'm just going to run that now, very rudely to interrupt him. And welcome back. So, yeah, so we're now going out six nights a week. How cool is that? And uh, I have to say, uh, I've been, hopefully I haven't done too bad a job with the new technology, as well as switching our broadcast provider, um, which if you were watching during the week, uh, we were doing some testing after VT Talk on, uh, on oh, no, after the Haze Hour on Thursday night, weren't we? Uh, and I wasn't around for that. And so uh, we're on a new uh, streaming provider but also i've got all this new hardware i'll, ju I'll just pop up this shot because because it's uh because it's a nice show off shot hang on there we go uh you can see <laughs> this is what i'm looking at at the moment and this is the first <laughs> time i've used it in anger so uh yeah if i have been a little bit sort of hesitant pressing some of the buttons but it's got, it, it could definitely have been worse put it this way in, in my dreams last night it was worse than this <laughs> So um, um, anyway, we, we've just got a, a couple minutes left there, there Tim. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question, sort of, uh, it's one of those uh, questions that I'm, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to already. Um, mm. But you, you were talking there about uh, normalisation uh, and seeing people with e-cigs in the hand and stuff is becoming commonplace. Um, are you as a company uh, doing anything to sort of promote these things in the area or anything like that? Yeah, funny you just mentioned that, actually. Um... We've, we already have um, other shops um, in the area that will sell juice for us out of hours. But most importantly, right. the, the nightclubs, the bars, the cafes, the restaurants, they've all got space behind their counter to actually put something there. So we're, we're actually um, promoting a, a stand which carries a, a range of disposables, which includes disposable cigars, also includes a rechargeable um, tornado-style blister pack, and juice on the stand as well in sort of menthol, tobacco and one fruity okay. flavour. 
which is going to be a stand which goes into the places, and that's that's something that we are we are promoting locally. So, so I mean, the, the the first question I've got on that then is, if you're selling this into clubs and stuff like that, they're obviously happy for the use of them there. They're asking for it. They're, they're asking they're for it. Ask, okay. They're actually asking for the products to be in 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 their clubs and bars. Uh, a lot of nightclubs have got two floors, so yeah. in cases like that, they would have a stand on each floor. And yes, they're very happy for people to use e-cigs there. Um, it keeps people inside the club. They don't have to police the road outside in the smoking area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's logistics uh, same solved yeah. must be, you know, worth having, I would have thought. Absolutely, yeah. Interesting. Uh, never, I'd never considered that before. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it helps them. It helps them no end. And, of course... Being a nightclub, I'm sure there's a, I'm sure there's an extra pound or two on each item for them as well. So yeah, oh yes, uh, yes, <laughs> you would expect so. And, I've, and seen, I've seen Ishisha for twelve pounds a pop in a club. So <laughs> <laughs> right, Tim, you believe it or not, we've reached the end of our allocated slot, and I know I just know that the viewers are dying to see my mixing video. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. won't call it a masterclass because it just <laughs> isn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm, so I'm going to say thank you very much again, mate. Uh, it's always right. a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, I'm going to kick you off, but before I do that, we're going to take a break, and I'll be back in about another. I think it's one minute forty seconds this time because I was working out my timings earlier. I haven't run to them, but you you, <laughs> you, you make the effort, don't you? <laughs> See you after the break. of Dave's Tackle Box. Iveber and Iveber Elixir, best in Yorkshire for your EC games. That's iveber.co.uk and iveber-elixir.co.uk. Iveber and iveber-elixir.co.uk are proud sponsors of iveberdrills.tv. And welcome back. Uh, thank you very much for that, Tim. That's, that's really got my uh, brain clicking away, this idea with the clubs and everything. There's, uh, I see potential for a feature in there sometime in the near future. Now, I really need to press on now because this is quite a long VT I've got. Um, mixing, right. Uh, I've done some YouTube reviews. It's not like the main thing that I do, obviously. A lot of the stuff I put on YouTube is a spin-off for VT TV. The, the video that I've done that has the most views was a, what I considered was a silly little piece on how to mix RY4. Uh, more than two years ago now, I put it on YouTube, and it's still, it, it's, it's getting so many views at the moment, it's funny. And it was just basically me with a bunch of stuff, chucking it into a bucket and uh, making RY4. Um, and to be honest with you, that was pretty much... The last time I mixed up any large volumes of juice, uh, I've done hardly any juice mixing since. But I went down to this uh, vape meet, uh, the South Wales Mini Meet, um, uh, two weeks ago now. And while I was there, the Decadent Vapors boys were there. And I, I'd been meaning for a long time to try their DY4. Now, coincidentally, somebody shoved a bottle of juice in my hand. And this was, this is a pre-bottled uh, flavoured DY4 that was um, a 24 milligram and 10 mils of that it went in like a day and a bit and the DV boys mixed me up some 30 milligram 50 50 D 
DY4 and I loved it. I fell in love with it. So I ordered some concentrate and it arrived a few days ago and uh, I set about making up a larger quantity of DY4 and this is how it went. Uh, so hopefully you'll enjoy this. We'll soon find out. Okay, so before I start, I'll just run through the uh, little bit of stuff and equipment that I've got in front of me. Um, you'll notice that I'm not wearing rubber gloves. Um, I'm working with 54 milligram strength nicotine liquid. Uh, that means I'm going to be very careful, basically. Um, I find that if I work with these rubber gloves, uh, I tend to be even more clumsy than normal and I'll probably end up spilling stuff <laughs> so I personally don't bother uh, but I do have some kitchen roll just out of shot of the camera uh, very easily available should I spill any if I spill any I'll mop it up go straight to the sink wash my hands and uh, I know from experience that that's not going to cause me any great problems in my case if you're nervous wear gloves that simple so this is like the, if you like this is the, the most important ingredient I've got yeah and this is as I say 54 milligram and I've gone for VG based nicotine liquid um, um, no particular reason for that other than I'm going to cut it down to be around about a 50-50 blend of VG and PG mm -hmm. and I've got this big bottle of PG lying around doing nothing so I thought if I buy VG Nick liquid dilute with this and obviously the flavouring will be mostly PG based anyway so we've got our nicotine we've got our PG this one's made by uh, Mistral uh, comes from Northern Ireland, I believe. They have an eBay shop, and you can go to their website. Um, yeah, they're in they're in County Antrim. And uh, if if you're buying PG, make sure you get the right stuff. Right, it's uh, it's the monopropylene glycol, and it's the pharmacopoeia grade. You know. Um, I, I'm not sure if you can get cheaper than this, but I think that bottle, and, and I bought it a couple of years ago, I mean, look how much I've got left. You know, there's half a bottle there. <laughs> uh, it's lasted me a long, long time, and it only cost me about a tenner from memory. Uh, so don't skimp on these sort of ingredients, you know. Uh, don't take any risks. Uh, these are a respectable company, and it's farmer grade. So, uh, so I've got my diluent, I have uh, the base nicotine liquid. Uh, the flavouring that I'm going for, as I mentioned in the opening comments, is uh, from Decadent Vapours. It's called DY4 um, and I bought the 60ml bottle, that cost me 20 quid. And I think it was a pound, they have a fixed rate postage thing so it cost me a pound to get delivered. Um, I'm probably going to use most of this um, flavouring. Um, one thing that I noticed is that the, the stuff they mixed for me at the meat was like a, a much more pink colour than this. So I'm not sure what's going to happen when I mix this all up, whether it'll look the same or what. Um, so that's basically what I'm going to make the liquid with. Uh, I've got, first of all, I've got a little 5ml bottle. In fact, it's the one that they mixed the sample for me at the meat. So this was done by the DV guys um, and I'm going to use this little bottle, I've just given it a rinse out and made sure it's dry inside. I'm going to mix up a little 5ml sample first to make sure that I like the mixture and the formula I'm going to use uh, before I basically mix up this bottle which uh, I will about half fill. This is an old uh, VG nicotine uh, bottle that I've scraped the label off and given a good wash out and dried it inside I thought that'd be perfect for storing this you can see I haven't got all the sticky label off <laughs> so I'll probably stick something over the top of that when I've done um, but yeah these uh, I mean a lot of people will recognize this this was full of 36 milligram VG nicotine liquid unflavored um, and I kept it when I emptied it because I thought that might come in useful one day and I've got uh, a selection of syringes. I've got a 1mm syringe, uh, a 20mm syringe, 
and a 10mm syringe so it should be fairly easy to measure out the quantities that I want with that. So I'm going to press ahead and make up my little 5mm sample first and to do that what I'm going to do is I'm using a juice calculator that I've always used basically I've used this for over two years uh, it's at toddmuller.com uh, I'll put the full URL on the bottom of the screen there's a lot more extravagant juice calculators around these days that allow you to do change the uh, the blend between PG and VG and all the rest of it but this one uh, has just always been fine for me um, now what I've done is I've keyed into this uh, that I'm using a 54 milligram base uh, I'm going to aim for about 25 milligram strength uh, in the final mix uh, I'm just going to create 5 mil to start with just as a tester and I know that the guys at the mini meter I asked them what percentage flavour they'd put it in they said about 20% so that's where I'm going to start um, and then what I'll do is I'll mix this up and if they then uh, you know and if, if, if the, if the, the flavouring is a bit stronger a bit less I'll tweak this formula and then apply what I end up liking to mixing the whole of the rest of it basically I'm going to be using 2.3 mil of this of the nicotine base I'm going to be using 1.7 mil of PG and 1 mil of flavouring that will give me 5 mils at 20% flavouring now in terms of the balance between PG and VG uh, I'm not going to get hung up on that too much and um, this is a PG base and that and that together constitute about 54% of the mix so it's going to be like a 46 VG to 54 PG percentage mix and, and I think that's close enough to 50-50 that I don't have to worry about piddling about with the formula frankly because it ain't going to make that much difference so I'm just going to mix this straight in the little bottle here and I'll give myself a bit of room to work and a bit of room for you to see. So I'm going to start with the nicotine liquid and the formula tells me that I need 2.3 millilitres of this. So off with the cap and this is a 1 mil syringe. That's 2.3 millilitres in the bottle. I'll just wipe the outside of that because obviously you need to treat it with a little bit of respect. Now, on top of that, we need to put in 1.7 millilitres of diluent in which case in this case I'm using PG so all I need to do now put the cap back on all I need to do now is add a milliliter of flavouring and then I can give it a go at that point and see if it's what I was after. It smells good. Put a little dropper cap on give it a shake so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and drip, drip that onto an atomizer and um, and give it half an hour or an hour or something of using it and if it's uh, if I decide that that's the formula I want I shall come and mix up a bigger quantity so back in a bit Okay, so I tried a bit of my little 5mm sample that I made and I decided that 
I needed to up the concentrate to something more like 30%. So I've got just under 125 mil of juice, loads of PG, loads of concentrate left, and uh, I'm now going to go to the juice calculator and see how much I can make. So if I aim for a 25 milligram level, let's see what it would take to make 250 milliliters of this stuff at 30%. I'd need 116 mil of juice. I don't have enough concentrated. It's a 60 mil bottle and I need 75. So let's try for 200 mil. And there you go. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll measure how much flavoring I've got and work backwards from there. So if we go into the big bottle now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure how much concentrate there is in this. It's a 60 mil bottle, but like uh, sometimes they go a bit over. I've used one and a half mil already, getting my recipe the way I like it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this syringe here and calculate precisely how much concentrate I've got, because that's my limiting factor. And typically, the syringe won't fit so, fortunately, I have a 5mm syringe here. So, I'll try this one instead. Hopefully, that will fit into the bottle. Yes, it does. I don't need the needle. So, this could take a while. I'll speed it up. So that's 60 mil in there and there's a tiny little bit left in the bottom of the bottle. So that's fine. If we go back to the screen then, um, that should enable me to make this recipe. Uh, 25 milligram, 200 milliliters of uh, at 30%. So I've got my 60 mil in there. According to the recipe, I need 93 millilitres of nicotine liquid. So let's start with that. And now I simply need to add 47 millilitres of the PG. Stick the lid on, stick the lids on everything, and I'll just be a shade. And there you go. 
go. <laughs> That's 200 millilitres of DY4. Well, uh, I'm just going to talk really, really fast now because I've overrun somehow because clearly I can't count. Uh, I've just promised uh, I, there's one thing that I absolutely have to do before I go and I'm scrolling up quickly, quickly, quickly. There's another vape meet on the 16th of March in Edinburgh. Um, and I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find the details. It's the 16th of March at the vape shop. Uh, it looks like Gorgie Road or Georgie Road. Uh in Edinburgh. That's all I know about it. I'll find out more details and confirm it for you next week. But for now, I've got to go. Uh, I'll talk about the DY4 next week. Thanks for watching.